Hello, everyone. In this video, I will be introducing you to Chapter 3, Adjusting Journal Entries. Adjusting journal entries ensure that all of our accounts are up to date so we can prepare financial statements. In Chapter 1, we talked about the time period assumption, which means that we can uh, divide the economic life of our business into these time periods, usually in uh, monthly increments. We want to prepare financial statements every month because we want to know what's going on so we can make better business decisions. So if we prepare uh, financial statements for the month of January, we should have all of our revenues for January and all of our expenses for January so we can have our net income for January. Now we can also uh, prepare financial statements for the entire year. For instance, uh, in this calendar year ending December 31, we would have all of our revenues from January 1 through December 31, all of our expenses, from January 1 to December 31 to get our annual uh, net income. Your book talks about a fiscal year versus a calendar year. A calendar year is what you are used to, right? December 1 is the end of the year, right? So um, a fiscal year is a year that doesn't end December 31. For instance, Fresno City College is on a fiscal year. Our new year begins July 1, and our year end is June 30. And that's very typical of government entities. In this class, I'm teaching you the accrual basis of accounting, which means that transactions are recorded in the periods in which the events occur. Revenues are recognized when earned, and it doesn't matter if cash is received. Okay, let me give you a good example of this. You mow your customer's lawn, and you tell the, uh, the customer, I just finished mowing your lawn, that'll be $30. He pays you the $30. Well, great, you earn the revenue, right? You earn $30 of revenue. But what happens if he, if you say, that'll be $30, please, and he says, I'll pay you later? You are still going to record the revenue. Why? Because you finished mowing his lawn. It doesn't matter that you received the cash. So remember, in the accrual basis of accounting, revenues are recognized when earned. It doesn't matter if cash is received. Likewise, Expenses are recognized when incurred. Incurred is just uh, a fancy word for it happened, right? So expenses are recognized when they happen. Now, it doesn't matter if cash is paid. If they happen, you record it. So let me give you a good example. Let's say that uh, you have an employee that works for you, and he finished like three days of work in December. Now, you're not going to pay him until January, but it doesn't matter that you're going to pay him in January. He worked for you in December, so you have to recognize wage expense in December. You also have to recognize the fact that you owe him the money, and that would be a, a, a credit to you know, wages payable. So again, expenses are recognized when incurred. It doesn't matter if cash is paid. We do have this method call, called the cash basis of accounting. Now, this is really easy. If, if everything was on a cash basis, I could teach you everything you needed to know within one or two sessions. You all get A's and we'd have a great semester. <laughs> But in the cash basis, it's simple. When you receive cash, you record revenue. When you pay cash, you record the expense. 
What's really crazy about the cash basis, though, is there's no such thing as an asset. Why? Because when you pay cash, it's an expense. So let's say you buy a truck. Well, because you paid cash and it's on a cash basis, you would be debiting uh, truck expense. Is that kind of interesting? Now, if 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 uh, cash basis is not in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, like I say here, why am I telling it to you? Well, you're going to encounter the cash basis of accounting. Your tax return is based upon uh, cash basis. For instance, you know you can't deduct an expense unless you actually pay it, right? But then again, if you don't have to re record the revenues on your tax return unless you receive the cash. So um, anyway, you will come across it, but it's not a uh, gap. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, illustrate this with a quick study problem. So get your textbook out and go to uh, quick study 3-2. It's on page uh, 117. And while you do that, I'll get this ready. Okay, it says that in its first year of operations, Roma Company reports the following. Compute Roma's first year net income under the cash basis and the accrual basis of accounting. Let's start out with cash basis. <clears throat> We've earned some revenue of 45,000. On cash basis, we don't care what we earn. How much did, money did we receive? We received 37,000. So we're going to record revenue at 37,000. In the second point, we incurred expenses of 25,500. We don't care if it was incurred on the cash basis. How much cash did you pay toward them? We paid $20,250. So that's what we're going to put. Now, this third one is really interesting. And before I tell you this, I'm going to tell you something that's really kind of interesting. Did you know that assets and expenses have something in common? Assets and expenses have one thing in common. They're both costs. So why is one cost an asset, but the other cost is an expense. Well, if that cost is going to benefit you in the future, you're going to book it as an asset. So uh, when you buy an insurance policy that's going to cover you for a year, well, that cost is going to benefit you over the entire year. So it's a prepayment uh, that will be used over the entire year. So we book that as an asset. Now, uh, how about telephone expense? Well, that's not going to benefit us in the future. You know, we're, we're going to pay our telephone bill, let's say this month. Next month, we've got another bill. So our telephone expense, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do us any good in the future. So in this example, we made a cash payment for a prepaid item. Okay. So, but we're, uh, we're still doing the cash basis. So we don't care. In, in the cash basis, we paid it. So we're going to make an expense. It's that, it's that easy. If you pay it, it's an expense. So add that $67.50 here. Together, it's $27,000. So revenues minus expenses is net income of $10,000. Now let's go on to the accrual basis. First one, we earned revenues of 45000 but we only received 37000 cash. Well, I don't care what you received. We, we record what we've earned. We've earned 45000 so that's what we put in. The second one, incurred expenses of 25500 but we only received, or we only, I'm sorry, we only paid 20250 in cash. Wow, we don't care if, if it happened. We record it, right, for expenses. So uh, expenses, 25500 Now, that third item, that prepaid 
uh, sixty seven fifty in cash that we paid. Yeah, it, it's part of the expense of cash uh, basis, but in the accrual basis, because that cost is a prepayment, it's going to benefit us in the future. We're going to book that as an asset, and then like like insurance policy, right? And then later on, we'll expense it as we use up that policy. So, like I said, we prepaid uh, sixty seven fifty in cash, but that won't be expensed until next year. So that uh, ca cash uh, payment is not an expense. It's going to be an asset, a prepaid item. So we don't include it under expenses. Revenue, $45,000 minus expenses of $25,500 equals net income of $19,500. Okay, let's kind of show the difference between the accrual basis and the cash basis with, with this basic example. <clears throat> On December 1, Fast Forward pays $2,400 cash for a 24-month business insurance policy. Well, if you pay it, it's an expense, right, under cash basis. So what happens in the cash basis, we're going to record that whole $2,400 in December as insurance expense. Well, that's really kind of weird, though, isn't it? And it because that insurance policy is a 24-month policy. It's going to help us, you know, for the next couple of years here. But you were expensing it all in here in this at the end of December of 2021. So that's not as good as we do it in the accrual basis method. Here we are going to pay $2,400 for a 24-month insurance policy. Okay. And now instead of expensing the whole 2400 we know that cost is going to benefit us in the future. So we're going to uh Put that $2,400 to the asset prepaid insurance, right? And then as we use it up, we will allocate that uh, asset to expense. So uh, how does it uh, expire? How does that insurance ex uh, uh, policy expire? Well, it's $2,400 for 24 months, $2,400 divided by 24 months is $100. So every month, $100 worth of our insurance policy will be used up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna allocate that expense, $100 a month until our policy is all used up. This way, the expense is matched with the periods benefited by the insurance coverage. Also in chapter one, we talked about the revenue recognition principle. <clears throat> it states that uh, you recognize revenue in the accounting period in which it is earned. And revenue is considered to be earned at the time the service is performed, like you finished mowing a lawn, or the product is delivered. Okay, so here is where you would uh, recognize the revenue, in this case, when the service was performed. I have a great example about this when I was an auditor. Uh, me and uh, another auditor went out and we audited a company that sells uh, Thomas buses to school districts. Okay, so we were out at the job site and I'm just mind, minding my own business and I hear this heated argument in the owner's office. And I knew something was really wrong because my colleague was very calm and cool. He was just the nicest guy in the world. But man, the owner was really mad. Well, when, when they all both came out in private, I asked my colleague this. I said, Phil, what was going on in there? And he said that uh, the owner was recognizing revenue as soon as 
the school district ordered the bus. He can't do that. In order to uh, recognize the revenue, he has to deliver the bus. Oh, so, um, and why would the owner do that? Well, he wanted to beef up his income statement because he wanted to, to, to show that he had more net income than he had. And because the more income he had, the more the bank was going to give him a loan. Matter of fact, the reason why we were out there is the bank requested audited financial statements. They wanted to make sure that what they were reading was in, in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Okay, so um, that was our function as an auditor. So the bank could, could uh, feel good about what they were seeing, make decisions based on that. So anyway, that was kind of interesting. Also, we talked about the matching principle. And uh, to measure net income, uh, all the expenses has to be matched with the related revenues. And I really like this little saying here, let the expenses follow the revenues. And that makes sense, right? You want to match the revenues expenses so that you get net income. Let me give you an example. There's three examples. But because we're doing a video, I want to give you uh, just one. And I think you would like this one because everybody likes the movies. Let me tell you something about movie industry and how they, they do their accounting. When they are producing a movie, they are incurring all these production costs, right? They got to rent lights. They've got to hire caterers, right? And so all of these costs... Uh, we, they don't know what to do with them. What are they, what are they going to do? Are they going to expense them? Um, because if they do that, then then uh, they're not getting any ticket sales because the movie hasn't been made yet. So uh, they 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 uh, hire a caterer. Okay, so they have um, food expense. Then their income statement, net loss. They rent some lights, net loss. I mean, all these months is net loss, net loss, net loss. And finally, when they start earning ticket revenue, big net income, big net income. Why? Because they're not matching the revenues uh, with the expenses. So what happens is that, that they, all these production costs are not going to be expensed. They're going to be put into uh, an asset, some type of prepaid asset. So those, those costs are in the asset. And then when later, when they start their ticket revenue and they get, they're get they starting to earn money, they'll transfer that uh, asset, those pro of production costs, into expense so they can match the revenue of the ticket sales with those production costs. That's how they kind of do it. That's the matching principle. Okay, so at this point, this is, this is an introduction uh, to adjusting entries. I'm going to uh, prepare and explain in general terms uh, adjusting entries. I mean, I've got a lot of videos that goes into, into more detail, but this is the overall picture. Adjusting journal entries, I call them AJEs, are made to ensure that revenue recognition and expense recognition principles are followed. Revenues are recorded in the period earned and expenses in the period incurred. Adjusting entries are necessary because the trial balance may not contain up-to-date and complete data. So we need the adjusting entries to make sure that all of our accounts and their balances are correct. Once they're correct, we can prepare our financial statements so that Adjusting entries are always required just before we prepare our company's financial statements. Adjusting entries make it possible to report correct amounts on the balance sheet and on the income statement. Matter of fact, if you have an adjusted entry, one of those uh, entries has to be an income statement. Uh, account, and the other one has to be a balance sheet account. For instance, uh, I'm just going to give you an example. 
a typical uh, supplies adjusting journal entry would be debit supplies expense, credit supplies. Supplies expense is the income statement account. The uh, supplies is an asset. That's a balance sheet account. So adjusting entry will always have one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Now, most revenues and expenses are recorded throughout the accounting period. For instance, you know, you receive a telephone bill and you pay that bill. Great. But some revenue and expenses must be recorded at the end of the period. <clears throat> I'll give you two examples. Supplies used. All right. When you buy supplies, you debit the asset supplies. But you don't get an invoice said, hey, man, you just used Rima paper and, and two, two uh, uh, boxes of paper clips. It, it doesn't happen that way. You have to figure out, well, how much did you use? And based on that, how much you used, we have to do our adjustment entry to record that. Or how about the uh, insurance policy expired? When we buy a policy, we debit the asset prepaid insurance, right? And it's an asset, but there's no invoice uh, that, that you're given saying, hey man, a month of your insurance policy just expired. It doesn't happen. We The, the accountants have to know that a month has expired. So we have to make our own adjusting journal entries to make sure that uh, our asset prepaid insurance is correct and our, the amount of insurance expense is correct. Let me give you an example of uh, supplies. The trial balance on October 31 shows supplies of 2,500. So let's put that in. We have $2,500 in the supplies account now. Now, an inventory count at the close of the business on October 31 reveals that only 1,000 of supplies are still on hand. Well, only a hundred, only a thousand dollars worth of supplies are on hand. Well, can you see how much we used? Yeah, we used 1,500. We had, we bought 2,500, but when we counted our supplies, we only ended up with a thousand. So we've used 1500. When we use the asset supplies, then we transfer out of our asset account into our expense account, supplies expense. What's kind of interesting here to note that sometimes expenses are called expired assets. Remember supplies, uh, is an asset, and, and these, these supplies are going to benefit us in the future, but eventually they're going to be used up. And when they're used up, then you have to take it out of the supplies and transfer it to the supplies expense. Okay. All right. The actual journal entry, debit supplies expense of 1500 credit supplies, 1500 Let's do one more. On October 4, we paid $600 for a one-year fire insurance policy, okay? We, that's an asset, right? Because it's gonna benefit us for a year. So we're gonna put it in our prepaid insurance account, okay? So uh, insurance of $50 expires each month. Well, how do they get that? Well, if it's a $600 policy for, and it's good for one year, well, six, 600 divided by 12 months means that it's going to expire $50 a month. So they want to record uh, uh, insurance for ex expired for the month of October. So we're going to take it out of our asset prepaid insurance because it expired and we put it into our insurance expense. So what's our, our adjusting journal entry? Debit insurance expense for 50, credit prepaid insurance, 50. Now, 
So we bought our policy for six hundred. We used up a fifty dollars worth expired. Right? How much do we have left that we that is going to be used useful for us in the future? Well, five hundred fifty dollars worth. Start out with six hundred fifty of it expired. So now we have an any balance in prepaid insurance of five hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, let's just do this multiple choice question. Adjusting entries are made to ensure that A, expenses are recognized in the period in which they are incurred. That's a good one. Yes. B, revenues are recorded in the period in which they are earned. Yes, I agree with that. Well, if A and B are right, that means that must be all of the above, right? Anyway, let's keep going on, on with C. Balance sheet and income statement accounts have correct balances at the end of an accounting period. Oh, yeah. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that uh, our all of our accounts that are going on our balance sheet and income statement have correct balances. We do that through just an entry. So it's the answer to this multiple choice question is D, all of the above. Okay, in our next video, uh, I'm gonna be teaching you about the different types of adjusting entries, but that's it uh, for this, this video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.